What up guys? Here we go again. I was actually doing some battles today of video when I woke up and I was, you know, not clothed and I wasn't ready to talk for a video. On hindsight, I just should have made a video during then because I ended up doing quite a few battles and it went super well and it was fun. But I did the change that I was talking about on the last video. I don't think this is a lot, but I put a little bit more accuracy on my Necrot, he's like 300, and I put him on Polymorph because, you know, you can never have enough Polymorph in Arena, especially if you go second. Now, sometimes um, Life Harvest can still be quite good, so I don't know if it's gonna be a thing that maybe I should have like one or few champions in it, since even my UDK is in Temporal Chains these days. I feel like maybe I should put UDK back to Life Harvest, honestly. But I kind of... Um, I'm kind of running low on gems, so maybe I'll do that later. I, I'll think about it. I, I think I'll, I would have to spend games if I do it. Maybe I'll do it on Friday <laughs> when I get the content creator gems, not Polymorph. But yeah, not gonna pay 300. Anyway, so... I ended up using Necrot quite a bit with Galleos, which I haven't been really, haven't been using Necrot a lot, but sometimes I end up, ended up picking it with him, especially, you know, since everybody, or not everybody, but you know, almost practically everybody that I meet, they know exactly my champions, and if they don't go first pick and pick, you know, like Armands, they're gonna open with Harimothic, and even if they don't open with that, they're always gonna pick Harima against me. Everybody does it every single battle, because they know that I pick Krotos and Narsus, and I'm gonna cry if they pick Karima. And I pretty much used, like, Galleos in almost every single fight when I was playing earlier today, and it, it went super well, and I think I can, I can do even better now that I'm getting more used to playing with Galleos. As you can see, almost every single battle. There's only a couple of battles where I was using <laughs> Protoss instead of him, which is funny, but you know, like every single person is picking Harima. And with him, the Necrot is actually kind of useful, because he's not quite as tanky as Rotos, even though I have the stone skin, and it, it kind of works out, and I don't need to pick the UDK so that the enemy can't pick it, so I often could go with Necrot, potentially. But usually, when I end up picking Necrot, it's gonna be like my last pick. It's not something that I pick early on, but I basically wasn't using him at all for for a while, and now I'm using him again. It's kind of, you know, ironic because Necrot is definitely the best champion that I ha have ever pulled, and I have pulled three of him, but he's kind of out of the meta at, at this moment. When Bolster set was released, Necrot was like insanely strong for a while, he got even better than he used to be, but these days many champions just counter him and ignore him and he's not like a very safe first pick that if you pick him then your nukers can be one shot. Honestly this battle I, I probably do want to go with Rotos though, I think we'll go with um, Rotos and UDK. This is kind of one of those old matchups that I've faced many times, and I really do like picking Rotos and UDK against Taras and Sifi, which are very common picks and used to be more common than they are right now. And you know, I've been <laughs> I've been through this many times before. It would be good too if you had Sifi instead of UDK. You could it could almost even be better because with Sifi. If Taras does the, does the A2 on Rotos, let's say that you hit their marriage cup with your A1, then Taras is gonna counter attack. Ah, we got Harima. <laughs> then Taras is gonna counter attack, and you're gonna take 50% of your health and get an extra turn, but you're not gonna get stunned because of Sifi passive. Damn. Rotos is good here, but the Harima is, so I think we're gonna go with Wukong. I think that's, that's my best way to deal with this. The only thing that I'm kind of afraid here is that. Maybe I need to go with Datsus. I think if I pick the Wukong, he's gonna ban my Ankara, and it's gonna be very tough to deal with this team without any Revivers. I would have 
in hindsight, I would switch my UDK maybe to Wukong, just so I could polymorph the Arima. But now we're just gonna <laughs> gonna pray for some polymorph procs from Duchess or Rotos. But okay, I, I was just spouting that I'm using Galleos in every single battle. <laughs> And I'm super hyped about it, but of course, on on the first battle, we're not picking it, even though earlier today, I I picked Rotos like once or twice in like 10 battles or something like that. Anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting slowly hyped up. I wasn't expecting Galleos to be that useful for my account, but we kind of found a very nice purpose that is... <laughs> Exactly what I needed. So may maybe buying those few primal shards, I think I bought like 20 primal shards. Maybe it wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> Even though I kind of feel bad about it, but maybe it wasn't that bad. No, not, not saying that you guys should go and buy Primal Shards to, to get Galleos, but you know, on your own uh, judgment. It, it is just what it is, like where the game is going and has already been for many months at this point. Mythics are the new meta and the future, and the old champions are kind of uh, getting out of the way. Even Taras isn't as dominant as he used to be. He's still insanely good, I mean... I was telling people to pull during the Taras and Maritska 15 acts, which was a little bit controversial, surprisingly. Some people were telling me that you shouldn't pull during it, but it was two different good champions during Void 2 acts, and there's many bad... Uh, void 15 acts, and there's many bad Void champions. But, yeah, even still, they are very good to get, of course. But they are not mandatory like they used to. Maybe Maritzka. Maritzka is still kind of mandatory for a classic arena defense. If you really want to have a top tier team. Outside of like some very specific circumstances that you have like... <laughs> you have many good mythical champions and you're like 460 speed. But generally everybody is still using Maritzka defense. But Taras often is not even in those teams, kind of surprisingly. And in Live Arena too, like, you you see more Mythicals than you see the Ukraine duo, honestly. I don't know if we have, with the Harima passive, I don't know if I did the A3, I don't think it even would kill the Sifi, even though she's that low HP. Yeah, she was kind of tanky, I don't think she would have died to the A3. I think somebody was asking about it in comments the other day on a video, and every now and then I get the same comment, that why did I use Rotos A2 instead of A3, and that A3 would have killed the target. But if they have Harima passive in the team, Rotos A2 is gonna do like double the damage of the A3, more than double the damage, it, it's not even close. And if you want to, <laughs> little bit chilling, but if you want to check out the specific numbers, there's a calculator in my Discord, which takes into account everything. Masteries, Harima passive, defense level, ignore defense, your stats. It will calculate everything and it will give you the exact number that you do and it can even show you like how much damage that skill would do with Helm Smasher and how much it would be do without it proking and what's like the upper and like the maximum and minimum limit that that, that skill can do in that situation. But Harima passive completely got the Rotos A3 and at that point, the A2 is going to do way more damage. I think this is, this seems to be like a very, very, um, very long battle. I don't know if we can take it or not. 
He even has the life harvest, that's kind of an issue. Yeah, I wanna spam the A2, but if I weak it, I'm not gonna steal HP. Let's see. Oh nice, we didn't weak it. <laughs> I don't know why, I've, I think weak hitting is like 30% chance, but weak hitting feels like way more than that in practice. It feels like it's it's 70% chance to weak hit and 30% chance to not. And I'm very afraid to like hit Harima often on my Rotos. Oh nice. I don't know if that th did anything, but we got <laughs> we got the cooldowns and dances. Now that his Sifi is dead, he doesn't have that many buffs on the team, and the Taras AoE Nook isn't doing that much. The A2 is also not doing anything because UDK is absorbing it, and we're healing it quite a bit. And the, even the um, even in future when the UDK is dead, like we have been hitting Taras many times, and his passive reduces your attack when you hit him which is generally a good thing, but for supports, if you hit him a few times, then that will like cut his A2 damage to half, so the Taras is kind of getting actually like a diminishing... Um, I think, yeah, I don't think, I think I'm gonna just steal more HP from those. I think I'm gonna block revive like maybe right now, so let, let's hit them. But Taras is actually getting like Diminishing returns at this point. Obviously, Arima is getting more damage, so we need to still worry about it. And Rotos has a very hard time killing Harima, but maybe with like two hits we might kill it now, and I think we might be able to get the block revive at this point. Oh, I maybe should have still hit Taras there, but I think I probably reduced the Angora attack enough. Okay, sh surely that's it, and now now we should start block reviving. Maritzka is kind of low too, maybe we can actually kill it now with the A3. Maybe we're not gonna end up killing the Arima first. But she doesn't have the heal anymore. She just used it, so... My Rotos doesn't seem like hitting that hard because of the Harima passive, but we have done the A2 many times, so Rotos is actually hitting insanely hard right now. The issue is just that the Harima passive... I think we got double turn. We, we got one turn from the kill and second turn from the Taras counter attack, so yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's game over. Surely, right? I don't know if I want to revive the UDK or not. Okay. I think that sealed the deal. Arima is dead. He doesn't have any buffs, so Aras can only really deal damage with A2. And even that damage is halved, so he is not a threat at this point. Cheers to that. I don't really have these, you know, 10 minute battles that much anymore. Used to be much more common. I guess probably has to do with the fact that Taras used to be much more popular than he is right now. But we don't really get these long battles anymore. Okay, let, let's see what we get. Can we get anything good? I have one super good helmet on um, Impulse set. And I really want to get like a tanky bear with that, but it's so hard to get anything good on, on this set. You, you get it so rarely, only from these chests, and they're not even guaranteed to be 6 star, and there is two different sets that you can get from it. I wanna roll those gloves though, they could, even though it's defense, so we're not gonna use it on tank support, 
but they could potentially be triple speed. Let's just roll all the way to 12 and see what we get. Uh, not bad. I don't think I probably want to use a double roll, but I'll definitely keep them. And anything that I roll triple, I'm just gonna chaos or it, so... As far as the Chigla set goes, it's it's very good to be for damage, now that it was buffed. But I have, you know, Cruel and... You often want to pair like Lethal and Stone Skin or something like that. It's not... I don't really need it as much as um, you might think. It's definitely... Well, definitely is maybe not the right word, but it's kind of the best two-piece damage set right now. Cruel is obviously the other one, but it can be better than Cruel on some situations. Like, if you're HP or defense scaling champion, and you're full health, and you get like 20 crit damage and 12% uh, like total damage, I think that's gonna be better than Cruel at that point, but it really depends on enemy defense, so we would have to look up the calculator and the numbers. Okay, let's see what we get. But yeah, I, I was, you know, I was kind of down on the weekend. <laughs> I wasn't even planning to make, you know, video on Sunday, but then somehow I got motivation to do it. Like, usually, you know, if I speak a little bit about the, like, YouTube made the game, there's like certain times that it's better to post videos. And I would say like, let's say like 30% of my audience is American and maybe like 50% is European. And there's not that much like other countries, like, Asia or Latin America or Africa, obviously, you know, Western world is mostly playing Western mobile games. Kind of curious he didn't go with Armands, but maybe he has like Grixia and Galatir and he's super fast. But there's like certain times that you want to post the videos that, that, that are much better than others, and it's like the time, the best time zone for every Western like content creator is somewhere between like I'm like plus two GMT time, so need, you need to adjust it to your own time. But it's somewhere between like um, sixteen and eighteen uh, plus two GMT, or if we put it a little bit more probably, let's say like like fourteen to twenty, but sixteen to eighteen is like the peak time. And if you post it after that, like if I post it like, like 10 p.m. of my time, that's like, then it's like the off hour starting from that. And that's the worst possible time to like ever post any videos. <laughs> and sometimes I do it, I try to not, not do it and play smart. And Sunday I was super bummed about um, failing with my shark pools. I don't think I made any video on Saturday. And then I was just, you know, working out and went to the gym and running and then I when I came back I was like fuck it let's make a video <laughs> and it was like super late and and so on but I kind of got over it now that I had fun with Galleos I don't think Galleos is gonna be the okay I need to Ankara I don't think Galleos is gonna be the second coming of Gala you know those times were very special when when I was dominating the top 10 or like, you know, even like the top 3 of um, Platinum Arena with Gala, you know, <laughs> that used to be a thing that happened. Uh, it's not going to be w quite that big deal, but I think uh, I think Gala's is fine. He's actually pretty good. I, I go back on my word about him. He's not that bad, e even though I don't ever see anybody using him and I probably have fought against him like maybe three times maximum, but he's actually pretty good. He's not bad at all. He's way better than, you know, like uh, normal champions like Staldus or Xena and so on. Mythics are just on, on a different level. 
Do I want to go with Necrot here? Let's try it, but I'm not quite sure about this. I think against Tara specifically, we're kind of um, lacking the damage. Now, should I try to play like 4D checks here? Because um, obvious choice is that I'm gonna ban Krixia, but maybe maybe I go for Sifi ban, and he he also I'm assuming that he bans my Armands. Okay, if he didn't, this would have been a mistake, but it's most likely he's gonna ban the Armands. Maybe we can finesse him now, actually. Now he doesn't have immunity, and we definitely can't, like, you know, one-shot the Taras or anything like that. But I think Kalleus might be able to kill the rest, though. <laughs> if I keep doing this, I think I did this, like, once or twice on the last video, too. If I keep doing this, it's gonna backfire and I'm gonna get losses, so I think I need to mix it up and I can't YOLO it all the time and assume that they're gonna ban Armands, but usually they are gonna do it, so you can kind of assume it. But if they know that they are faster, especially if they have two like lockouts or two speed threats, then they often will not ban Armands. If they just have one, they assume that you're gonna ban their like Grixia or Galatir or whoever, and they will also ban ban your Armands, but you you might just um you might just not ban the Greeks, yeah. Okay, that was that was too slow. Should have should have hit the um Greeks, yeah, not the not the Harima. Oh, we got the cooldowns back. Let's see, how, how much polymorph does he have? <laughs> Is he gonna proc it or not? Two champions, not not too bad. Okay. We didn't kill anybody, but, but we got the decrease. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, that, was it the counter attack? I think that was a counter attack, but, but no. I thought Marit could... I guess she used the glance. Yeah, she used the glance, okay. I guess she... No. I think he got like two turns from Relentless and, and then got the cleanse back. Uh, what? I think we're gonna kill everybody though. Okay, th this is a weird battle. I screwed up, he screwed up, I was being slow and talking and not paying attention, but somehow I think we won this battle. Okay. <laughs> Rooster, Rooster did it again. Here we go. I made a lot of mistakes in this battle, but somehow we somehow we got it. I don't know how we did it, but we we did do it. My Ankara lost the stone skin, unluckily, and died pretty early. But la at least on her way out, she procked a A1 and <laughs> gave my Narcissus the chance to take him out. And Galleus, I guess, was kind of in a support role here. <laughs> that he didn't really kill the enemy team, but he did put the decreased defense up, that kind of sealed the deal on the battle. <laughs> it's super fun because, you know, I don't have a defense buff, I'm literally running him without defense buff, and everybody, including me, thought that Galileo sucks, and I feel like he's not that bad at all. I'm not even using him with defense buff, you know, if you had Sifi, he would be way better, so I think he's actually pretty good. Like, defense buff is very big deal, especially on a champion like him, that isn't like an insanely hard-hitting champion and relies on, you know, the decreased defense and de defense buff and so on. He doesn't have, like, ignore defense and ridiculous multipliers like maybe Taras or Rotos. But okay, we'll, we'll take it. Luckily, I also had the three-star blessing on him. I'm not quite sure, but I think I got it not that long time ago. I think I got it uh, whenever was the last time that there was summoning event for six-star souls. I think I got it then, so I was kind of lucky with that. Galastir, I think we're gonna go with mod on this one, probably. Mord and Rooster, and 
we'll see what we pick as the last champion. It, I mean, I kind of said it many times already, but it, it feels so good to not be, not be forced to be Krotos in every battle. You wanna pick Harima? Okay, that's fine. I can just, I can pick something else than Rotos. Pe people, people are so afraid of my Rotos, but Rotos is also so easy to counter, so it's not really that good, <laughs> good for me. Okay, Komidos. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna go with Necrot. We we have both of our revivers in Stone Skin, which is not good. I feel like I probably maybe it's time for me to put my dots <laughs> without four B Stone Skin. Maybe that would be the way to go, because I'm not using dots all that much anymore. And in these battles where I meet bombs, which does happen surprisingly frequently, I think almost on every video. I meet maybe like one or two bombs teams and I usually do very bad against them. Would be good to have one reviver that doesn't take the double damage in stone skin. I probably could get like really closely high HP on my Duchess if she wasn't in stone skin. Maybe like 180k or, or something like that. Something that you have never seen before I think. She's, she's 160k health now. But it's with 4 piece stone skin, so I could have like like two, like not two. I could have one more immortal two pieces. Maybe not 180k, but maybe like 170k. We'll see. I'm not sure what I want to do here. Wait. I think maybe. No, okay. I was gonna say that maybe with the revive, if I do the revive and I reduce their turn meter, it might help my Narsus to go before the Galatir. But looks like my Narsus was gonna go first anyway, but I don't think we're gonna kill anybody. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I, I need to have the Dutchess in the like full 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 health and no stone skin. I think that's gonna be the way to go in the future. Like I said, I used to crutch a lot on my Duchess. I don't use it that much anymore and the main reason I've been using her still, even after Narcissus changed the game, is that I happen to have her in six star polymorph and I don't really have many champions in that. Only Rotos and Duchess. But if I'm using a lot of support champions, which I am these days, like Mikage, Wukong, even Rooster, that have accuracy and polymorph, then it's maybe a little bit better than it would otherwise be. And also as soon as I get very smart. As soon as I get the blessing for mod, I'm also gonna gonna have one polymorph in that, so yeah. Can I change it now? Probably it w Wait, what? I changed it already. I totally forgot about this. Damn, that was a mistake. I should I should have picked Dutchess in that battle. I think I changed it earlier today, and I totally forgot about it. I think I took Dutchess pieces on Maud or somebody else. No, I think I took it, took them to Necret, or I think I shuffled around the gear between Dutchess, Necret, and Maud because I was trying to get more accuracy on my Necret and putting it on Polymorph and I totally forgot that I actually did this to Dodges. I only need to ask in these uh, gloves because I haven't been using them before. Would be nice to get some HP here. I think I can afford to use a 6 star defense clip. Nice. What health would she be? Mm, okay, not that high, like 162k. No? Yeah, like 162k or 163k health when we when we get this Ascension. I think I probably could have won that battle if I picked the Duchess, but I totally forgot that I did that. I thought she was in stone skin. A lot of changes lately, I'm not able to keep up with it.
Okay, we might have lost that one, but next time we'll get him. Okay, he's going with the Rotos and I can be the one that want to bully him and pick the UGK. Nice. Also, one good thing about Galleos is that he's not very common and also not very popular. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to get him in every battle. Nobody else, nobody else is ever gonna pick it, so they will always let me have him. Damn, there's a potential here, depending on what he picks. Like he has to pick one nuker. We already have UDK against Rotos, so we could go with Heliget. As long as ah, damn, I could still almost go with Heliget. I kind of feel like going with Heliget. Like the thing with Heliget is now that. Marius is going to reduce the duration of the buffs, and we are going to lose the block damage. But guess what we are going to get? Defense buff <laughs> on uh, Gallows. And sometimes we might have the block damage for a turn or two. So I think I could go with it. Yeah, let, let's do that. I don't know if I'm going to win this battle, but we'll give it a go. I think, yeah, I think he's still going to ban the UDK. Makes sense. But yeah, I was just complaining that I don't have have a defense buff champions, but we can we can kind of do it with Helicat and Mitral sometimes, but often you need something else and they're not really huge enough to peek into the battle. Or he Helicat is always good enough to peek into the battle, as long as he's not countered, but he's countered in almost every battle, so that stays so. Mitral is kind of mediocre th these days and not that big deal. But I, I should definitely try, like, against some... Okay, I'm just getting pawned. <laughs> against some lockout teams, I should just go with, you know, the Rooster and... Um, Mitrala. And both of them could work against it. Okay, we can... Actually, get a turn now with um with the helicas. I think. I don't think um. What's the name? I don't think Shu Chen has the extra turn up yet. Let's see if we can remove the attack buff from Rotos. <laughs> though, <laughs> though I guess he can just kill the helicat again. But okay, what? He went for Narsus. I probably would have killed the Heligat if I was him. Yeah, I, I wish Gallows had some double hits because he doesn't have on any of his skills double hits, so even though he's strong affinity against Rotos, but his passive is still kind of giving us some issues. Okay, Duchess has immunity buff and Marius too, so... Oh, I wasn't expecting Duchess to die. We didn't get the decreased defense on Duchess. It's kind of bad though, uh, Rodos keeps getting extra turns. We have the Enfeeble on us, and... Um, Angora is locked out, so it's not like she can save our um, Galleos. <laughs> Damn, with the decreased defense weak it was enough to kill them. Holy moly, I was not expecting to beat this guy, honestly. The Duchess is not maybe that scary, but everybody else in that team is super scary. I didn't think. I didn't think we could do it. It was kind of a Hail, hail Mary, but I guess we got some Galleos Helig attack. I kind of want to see now if we if we can get one of those 
lockout matchups and go with Mitrala and Gal Galleus. O often in those matchups, you know, they get the lockout and then you basically have to ban the lockout and they get the perfect team. But if I go with Mitrala, who can probably resist their lockout, and Galleus, who, who doesn't also mind it, maybe I'll go with Angora and Narses or maybe Mikage or something like that, I can potentially kind of avoid most of the downsides about the lockout and maybe ban one of their nukers or their Sifi or something like that and it could throw them off very big time. They need to add defense buff to Armands, that, that would be great. <laughs> Drog's head would explode if they if they did an Armands buff. Obviously that's never gonna happen, but people were asking this a lot from the from the community managers in the content creator chat and basically banana banana cham and cirilla very like um like they they closed the case and said that they are not gonna nerf armands and that's it that that's basically what they said so don't don't hold your hopes up that he will get nerfed someday i don't think that's ever gonna happen and he's actually getting buffed by pinpoint set and so on so <laughs> it's even worse than that. Okay, I think uh, what do we want to do here though? We kind of need to go with Rodos and Gallows now. I don't know if I had this combination in any battle so far yet, but I think we're gonna have to go with that. And I guess the only reviver that we can really pick at this point is gonna be Mord. I guess we're gonna do that. The good, then one nice thing about Maud, among other things, is that she does do the attack buff on her A1 and her revive does both attack and defense buff, so she actually can add that thing. The thing is, the main issue I have with Maud is that she doesn't have the base stats that uh, Darces and Sifi have, and she's a lot more squeezy than those two. I wish she was a little bit more tanky. Damn, his team looks very tanky though, so I don't know if we can last long enough to kill it, but I think we have to go with this. You know, I could pick Helicat instead of Galleos, it's something to consider. I could kind of do it. He has to ban the Armands too. Dude, okay, this time we're not gonna pick the Galleos. This is too good opportunity to, to pass, pass off to annoy somebody with Helicat team, but um, whatever he picks last, I can ban it. I can deal with his current, current team with my Helicat. Yeah, I'm um, Burp, Wukong, Instaban, see ya. And he can't ban my Helicat. We, we have the dreaded, what? Okay, now I'm super confused. What is he doing? I don't know if he misclicked or he's going for some weird Hail Mary, but out of all of the things, like, okay, fair enough, if he Maybe he he had to ban Armands, but maybe he made a mistake and banned Helicat. But why, why did he ban my Rotos? I think he thinks that my Helicat is not a nuker, but he's a nuker. He might not have the highest damage, but we have Armands in the team, dude. Like, surely I can kill him with Helicat. But we'll see, we'll see. Maybe he knows something that I don't, but I feel like there's no way that I can't. <laughs> I can destroy him with Armands in my team. He doesn't have lockout or anything like that. Just nothing is stopping my Armands from, from like absolutely like dominating his team. Who do we want to get rid of? I don't think we really need to get rid of anything, but let's get rid of the stone skin on Ankara. We're gonna get the block damage buff up, you know, so. I, I don't feel like I'm in trouble. We, we can even remove their buffs to do more damage. Okay, well, I guess he resisted. I'm kind of surprised. I don't know if I'm... I probably got unlucky because I think my mod is like 430 accuracy or something like that. There's no way he has like 500 resistance on his Taras and Narsus. 
No way. Armand's getting polymorphed was a little bit unfortunate, but it's gonna happen. He does have, you know, double reviver, but we also do have the... Uh, I forget the name of this blessing. Cruelty. We have cruelty. And we're gonna reduce his defense over time a little bit. Though it would be way better if it was 6 star blessing, of course. But I, I don't think... I don't think it's impossible to kill his team. Maybe I shouldn't have used the heal, maybe I should save it up for later. Okay, we have two polymorphs though, it's kind of not the best. And I should have hit the Taras instead of Ankara. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, I, I, I screwed it up. Dude, I, I thought I had this with Helicat, but I shouldn't have used the shield yet. Maybe later if I needed heals, but I shouldn't have done that and I should have... Um, get, getting everybody polymorphed from the get-go wasn't the best, but I think we could have won it still if I just didn't use the UDK A3. Happens. Obviously, you know, he had kind of tanky team, so it's not like it was super easy to nuke it with Helicat, but, but I think it was totally doable, though. Oh, we got an BF guy. I was just talking today, I think on Was It Soul Saint stream, and we were talking about, like, arena clans, and he was starting, talking about the time slots when classic arena reset happens, and I, I told him that like, he's American, and for Americans, the reset is, like, during the middle of the night. Not, not like, 12 p.m., but, like, 4 a.m. or something like that, depending on, of course, your state. But the best time, like, the best uh, location where people have a good time during the reset is the Asian people. And for them, it's, like, on evening, and it's a perfect time. And he was asking that, is there even any Asian people that do Platinum Arena. And I, I think there's a lot of more like European and American people that, that do it to be fair. But NBF is the one big arena clan that is Asian. I, I think there's, there's one other one that the name is just, you know, they don't even have like uh, some English letters in the clan. Like, so. I can't recognize it, but I think there's one other one, but NBF is the main Asian clan. They're not quite as active as like SP and IPR and MAD and CHQ, CHQ but they are one of the top clans and they have a couple of people that are top 20 every time they push. Pro probably this guy is one of them, but you know, I can't I can't uh, differentiate from the letter, so I can't really tell if he's one of those people. I guess Kalleos is gonna be strong affinity against uh, Lazarus, so that's a good thing. But what else? I feel like we are gonna go for the Grixia ban in, in this battle. Should I try? Nah. Let's try Mika. Okay, let's try it. I think this is gonna be very hard to beat. I don't think I can do it, but Mika can might be kind of able to cleanse the Enfeeble and might buff strip and so on so and she has the polymorph so maybe she will add enough utility to take this battle. Oh he's going with triple Nogar. Siegfried is kind of annoying because he's both a reviver and a Nogar. I, I guess Lazarus is too but Siegfried is also tanky.
I think people often forget or don't know about NBF because they are the top arena clans. L let's call them like top 5 arena clans. It's obviously gonna be Mad, IPR, CHQ, SP and NBF. And it's definitely one of the top clans, no doubt. But since they are not Western and they are not really hanging out in the Discords, people often don't really know them that well. I think there's like one NBF. I don't know if I want to open with the A3 or not. I think we want to do it now so that Rooster still has stone skin and it's not gonna get any feeble. Yeah. There's one of them that hangs out, or at least used to, but I don't think he's super active in in the discourse, but again it's a Chinese name, so I can't really call him by his name, but it's not this guy, because I think that guy has one or two rank one trophies that I'm talking about. He's the guy who who, who won rank one um, flat with Valkyrie defense, and this is not like four years ago, but maybe like two years ago. Do I want to do the shield before... Marius does the enfeeble? I think, I think we kind of lost, to be honest. Lazarus is just gonna kill everybody except Ankara and it's game over, yeah. It's very hard to deal with a team that goes first with Marius and removes your stone skin. R really, the an answer to that is that we would have needed like Harima or something to mitigate the damage. Can we can we hit 5.8k today? So I'm started out very well, but now we're kind of getting some tough matchups. By the way, I mentioned this before, but there's this MMO that is gonna be releasing in a couple weeks called Throne of Throne and Liberty. So if anybody is gonna play that game, hit me up. I'm definitely planning to play it. I don't have super high hopes for it, but I'm a big MMO buff and I can't wait to have a new one to play. <laughs> the last new MMO launch that I played was, I think, Alien Online. And that game went kind of under the radar and I think the game closed in like six months or something like that. Very fast. I think many people considered it a very bad game. But I think it had very good world PvP and I actually had had good time <laughs> time in the game while it lasted, but the population of that game like died in a month, so Hmm. I don't know what I want to pick as the... Let's go with Mitral, even though he's not going with Lockout yet. But let's go with the Mitral once and see what happens. If he doesn't go with Lockout, I think I'll maybe pick Wukong and maybe... Oh, he did go with Lockout. Interesting. <laughs> he got the Mika guess I'll... I can't go with my replacement Wukong. In this situation, I probably should go either with UDK or a second reviver. Probably UDK, but I, I think he's gonna ban it for sure. Yeah. Ding in here though is that he doesn't have any immunity or cleanse. So Mitrala, <laughs> Mitrala Hex might actually be super devastating against this guy. Assuming that we can get like a couple turns after his stone skin ends, I think it it might actually be super bad for him. I hope his Harima goes before my Mitrala, honestly. We, we can't tell right now because 
Ah, oh, fuck. Because both of them are full 10 meter. Damn. He removed the stone skin on my Galleos. I think we have to do the A2, but do I want to do it? Nah, let's do the A3. Yeah. I want to get the Hex on, on his Nuker, so I, I can't do it. Even though I kind of would have wanted to save that skill for Glen Slater, but we have to use it now. Okay. We got a turn on Galleos though. I don't know why he didn't try to kill my Galleos. I guess he probably wouldn't have been able to kill it, to be honest, because he doesn't have defense buff on Harima, and that was the first turn. But I think we're gonna kill everybody except Siegfried. Maybe you make one Siegfried survive. Ah. Oh. We got Polymorph. That happens, but we we did get the decreased defense on Harima, so that's gonna help us a little bit. And now we can get the Hex on everybody on Mitra, and maybe we can recuperate and get our team up in the time that they're sitting in the Hex, or the petrification potentially. I don't think he wants to switch the form, <laughs> form of Mikage because he wants to get the cleanse against the Hex and petrification. Oh, he broke the polymorph on Mikage, but it's not 6 star and my um, Mitral are resisted it. Yeah, that... damn. That polymorph... ah, oh, fuck. Damn it, I could have gotten the revive on next turn. That polymorph and Galleos came kind of at unfortunate time. If that didn't happen, we definitely would have won it, but I think we'll, we lost it now. Or if my uncle had just survived that, that and didn't die to the Soul Reap, we, we would have got the Narciss back up and killed his Nukers. Okay, okay. We lost that one. It, it was super close, but we lost it. <laughs> Obviously, when I was playing by myself earlier, I was winning every battle, but on the video we do a little bit worse, or <laughs> a lot worse, I guess, but happens. Which type of champion do you even use this set on? And he's talking about Super Sonic set. I think you want to use it on, you know... I don't think it's that meta. Like, the... The big boy strategy that you can do with Super Sonic is that instead of going for a full 9-piece set, you can go for a 5-piece, and that way you can pair the 5-piece Super Sonic and get 20% speed. You can pair that with two speed sets, and that's faster than running triple speed. Or you could you could run triple speed and three piece supersonic if you have three accessories. That's an option. I think that's what people generally do. The thing with that is that it, it's actually slightly faster to go with protection five piece instead of supersonic. And on the champions that you would consider using this set on. Is pretty much like Sifi, and Sifi really likes the five piece protection too. So I don't think this set is super popular because of that. But you could basically put it on any support champion in PvP. I mean, I have it on my Wukong. I don't have it on any other champion on my account, and I don't think most people are really running that set a lot. Uh, maybe we'll, um, let's go with Galleos and not even pick the 
brothers just yet. Let's see what he does. Let's go with this. Maybe if he picks two supports now or so that I don't have to ban anything in his team, I could maybe go with Rotos without using UDK. Okay, I could totally do it here. Yeah, actually, I think we'll go with Wukong in this battle. The one, the one who happens to be in Super Sonic that we were just talking about. Now he doesn't have Sifi, that would like boost it. But of course, potentially, if he you know uses Mikage ally attack or Angora shields, they are still gonna boost us. But we're not really cutting in the same way like Sifi A2 will do it. Okay, triple nuker, interesting. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to actually go with the George ban, but I feel like I probably should ban the Narciss, but now let's go with the George. We have lots of stone skin, no UDK, he can kill us through stone skin, so gets rid of, let, let's get rid of that. We don't have shield or strengthen, and I could even technically do the defense buff on Galleos, even though that's gonna waste a turn. I could do that on my team and be kind of tanky against him. Galleos defense buff should definitely give him an extra turn or something like that. It, it, it's kind of a waste that on a nuker you do AoE revive on death and defense buff and it doesn't do anything else. Either that skill should just be an AoE damage attack at the same time, or it should grant him an extra turn, but I think it's very likely that he would get buffed, and that's probably something that they would do to him if he does. He doesn't have defense buff on Ankara. I think my Protoss might survive the A3, and I'm, I'm gonna try to polymorph the Garces because of that. Damn, his Ankara was hitting hard like my Ankara did on the uh, like uh, on the other day on a video. Okay, can we survive the Harimai tree? Okay, we could. Barely we could. This is kind of what I was predicting. And now Rooster can, can go into town. Hopefully we don't get polymorphed like the last time. But it does look like he has a lot of polymorph <laughs> in his team. Every single champion is in, in it, so... But we didn't get polymorphed. Nice. Okay. We gave it to him. And that's game over. There's... There's no comeback after that nook. Nice. Oh, oh, wait. Can he do it? No, okay. Easy. Oh, we still got time. I thought I thought I was kind of, kind of running out of time, but if we can get like three more wins, then we would be the 5.8 game. I'm kind of slacking like behind because I have not been playing every day like for many months at this point like I used to and we have like couple people in top 100 in my clan like father star and um biohack I think there's one more person I forget who it was I think there's maybe one more person or at least a while ago but anyway I definitely need to get there but <laughs> how many points do I need to get there like 1200 points that's gonna be a lot of battles so it's gonna take me a little bit to get there but we could do it it's totally in the realm of like possibilities i can't do it if i just 
start grinding every day like those other people. People have been talking about the fact that they should reset the leaderboards on Live Arena. And I kind of agree, not because, you know, not because I want to get higher than I am, but I think they, what they should do is that there's like seasons in Live Arena, and then you get rewards for like finishing certain ranks on every season, just like in Classic Arena, but the seasons could be like a month or three months or something like that. And some other events like paired with Live Arena, like tournaments, events, seasons, that, that kind of stuff. It would make a lot of sense and would make it a lot more popular, I think. It's kind of a dumb thing to say that, like, you know, when people say that we need to get more rewards from Axe content, haters are gonna say that, you know, if you don't like it, then don't do it. But that's a big motivation for people to, like, that are into it. It's not just, you know, getting stuff in the game, but it's about, you know, the challenge and accomplishment and that kind of stuff. And regardless if it's all, like, <laughs> irrelevant in the real world and so on, but if they just added more rewards to Live Arena, people would play more of it, and there's no question about it, and it could significantly boost the popularity of this game mode, and they totally should do it. And I think adding seasons and tournaments and that kind of stuff would make a lot of sense be very natural and interesting, and they could also put rewards, or of course they would put rewards in it, and that would incentivize people to play more of it and be more into it. And probably to buy more shards, so if anybody from Plarium see sees this, then implement it. If you want any pointers about it, then hit me up. I will I will definitely um, give my opinions about PvP issues for free. I, I will pay money if I can fly to Plarium headquarters and lobby them about changes to <laughs> PvP in this game. I, I would literally pay money for it. They, they don't need to pay for my tickets. I'll play, pay for my own tickets and and I'll pay them money if, if they let me <laughs> let me come there and lobby about it. I kind of want to go with Wukong here to maybe steal the boss from Alas. My, ch my champion pool or my picks have definite, definitely changed lately. I have started using Mikage and Wukong a lot more than I was a couple months ago. And a lot less dodges, as you can see. I only wish I could take the 6-star blessing from her and give it to somebody else. Like, goddamn, if my mod had the 6-star polymorph, that would be pretty good. Or Angora, like, whichever one of those two. I kind of like this matchup. I think we can totally do this one. We're really going with kind of very weird teams. I'm like, okay, I'm sure somebody's gonna say that they have seen this before, but I guarantee you, nobody watching this video has ever picked the team that I have, or faced anybody using this team. There's no way. If, if you tell me you have, I I almost don't believe you. I think we're kind of kind of on uncharted territory as far as the team comes go, but I kind of like this team. I think this makes a lot of sense. Also, we kind of have like, you know, double buff strip. We have the Wukong, but we also have the A3 on Gallows doing it. I could have maybe done that defense buff on that turn. Maybe that would have been the way to go. And just steal the buffs on Wukong and then on the next turn Nook. That, that could have been an option too, because I don't think he's able to kill my Gallows instantly with the Necret protection.
Okay, nice. Nice, we, we polymorphed the Harima with Kalleos. He's really doing doing the work in this battle. I don't know if I should just steal the boss or polymorph uh, one of them, but let's get the boss. No, they're definitely gonna die. And I think uh, now that they have defense buff on them, this is super conditional and not something that... I don't, this has never happened to me yet. I have not gotten this far in the battle that I get to use it. But I think the Galleos A1 right now is AoE. Let me double check, but I think it's gonna hit every champion in his team that has defense buff. Uh, de defense debuff. Attacks one enemy, places an extra hit on all enemies under decreased defense debuffs. So we could use that. Well, okay, let's use that skill. I was not gonna use it, but let's do it. So we hit the polymorph and we also hit the other ones. But also, if we could have done just the A2, because if we kill champions under decreased defense, it would reset the cooldown of the skill. So doing that would have been an option too. Okay. Good job, Carlos. Now he was the only nuker. He didn't get any external help from anybody else. I mean, he got support, but no damage from other sources. My voice is a little bit harsh today. I don't know if you can hear it on the video or not. I don't know why, but my voice has like very big mood swings that sometimes it's super hoarse, sometimes it's not at all. And I kind of sound a little bit different if it's hoarse or not. Not like I have been out drinking or anything like that. Wait, did I already close the Reddit? Okay, I didn't. Okay, let's see what else we got. Is Void Shard worth 2000 energy? Yeah. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I often don't go for those events that you can get something if you... If you farm like 3000 Dragon or something like that. Fusions are kind of hard enough as it is. Usually save it for those, but... The ones that I do go... Usually are not even Void... No, I mean, I do them sometimes, it depends, but usually the ones that I really want to go for is the tier 2 tokens for essence and then primal shards. Th those are the biggest deal. It used to be voids, but I'm not as um, like baited by void shards as I used to be. Okay, again, Marius, I don't really have a good solution against him yet. Fuck. Let's go with Mikage. Okay? He, he has the lockout and Armand, so we can't really use Wukong in, in this battle. I prefer Wukong over Mikage, but in this situation we have to go with her. If I pick Necret now, I think he's just gonna ban my Angora, but we'll, we'll do it. I feel like this is kind of impossible battle to win anyway, honestly. Necret is at least gonna do a little bit even if he's locked out, unlike, <laughs> unlike most other champions. Okay, we don't have like Angora or 
Rotos this time, so everybody got locked out. There's nobody that can resist it, sadly. Damn, I, and we got Enfeeble on on Galleos, which is not good. But we, we had to switch the farm. And he, he could have gotten Polymorphed on Marius, and if that happened, then that would have actually been super good for us. Oh, nice. Okay. That's a big deal. He, he should have hit the Mikage. He kind of made a mistake there. And since his nuke went to the reaction proc on Necret, that bought us a lot of time. But even if Necret didn't proc reaction, he still should have hit the Mikage. Because the AoE damage like scales of you know how much he does on the original hit. And it would have been much bigger on Mikage. Can my rooster get a turn? He, he can get another nuke here though, so... I hope we get Adak debuff. I think it's game over unless we get the Adak debuff now. Okay, we didn't. I think pretty much everybody's gonna die. I think only Gallus is gonna survive. Okay. I think he probably didn't proc Helm Smasher there. He was still going for the Necret instead of Mikage. Now, I understand why he's doing it. Like, if he kills Necret, then we lose the protection from Galleos, and Galleos could instantly die. But he should have just gone, Mikage, gone to Mikage both times, and everybody else in my team except Galleos would have died, guaranteed and safely. Ah, we keep getting Enfeebles on us, and no Polymorph on the on the on the Marius. Okay, we tried, but we definitely <laughs> lost that one. It's kind of getting late in Finland, so I'm I may be a little bit mellow and tired. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Making a lot of excuses that my voice is hoarse and I'm tired and mellow and so on, but it feels that way. Oh, Gestal Gaming. I have battled him quite a few times before. It's always an interesting matchup. We know what he likes to pick. Karas and Harima. Now he has other champions, but he pretty much always picks them. And yeah, we know what we're facing. I don't know if he knows that I have Galleo, so that might be be a new thing. He, he does streaming, and I think he does YouTube videos as well. But yeah, sh shout out to Gestal Gaming. This is his channel. I, I don't remember how many times, but he has definitely appeared on the videos a few times. He also has a website that is some some kind of raid wiki. I never understand why these games just don't do like official wikis themselves where they actually add like all the details that people have to data mine and so on. They, they could just put the actual multipliers and all the game mechanic explanations and the actual calculations and so on. That would be so much better, but... <sighs> Again, Marius. We just have to go with Polymorph and pray. I... I <laughs> I guess that's all we can do. I don't know if I want to pick my nuker yet. I think we'll go with two supports. Let's go with Duchess and Wukong. We'll have two polymorphs and maybe some like double chance to revive our teammates and try to stall the battle. Maybe we get polymorph proc eventually on the Marius or something like that. I don't know what he's gonna pick, like Lockout and Taras or Sifi and Taras. I feel like he's gonna pick Sifi and Taras, that's kind of what he likes to do.
maybe I can. I, I'm opening his stream again. Maybe we can. I, I can't really hear him right now because I don't have headphones on. But maybe we can see beforehand what he's speaking. Okay, the stream is on delay, so I can't actually see. It. Okay, we got UDK and Taras, so he's expecting me to be Krotos, like I always do. I guess we're gonna go with Galeos then. He, he's gonna have very tanky team, but there's only one reviver, so it's it's possible to kill it. Plus, Mariska doesn't really do like direct revives, so maybe we can kill um, the Marius early on, and then we can kind of you know try to stall and take it from there. Oh, he banned Wukong. I think that that actually makes sense, but. I still probably would have banned Narsus to be honest. My Narsus can nuke super hard now against the Taras and Marichka. And he has to use the Marichka cleanse at some point. Because he's gonna eat all of the defense uh decrease defense step off from Kalleos. Okay, here we go. I don't know what I want to do now. Uh, I probably shouldn't switch the form yet, but... No, uh, he's gonna do the enfeeble if we switch the form, but I guess we just have to do it. We have to brace ourselves and see what we get. Okay, we're good. Now, may maybe I get lucky. Uh, actually, should I do it right now? I don't know if I should do it A2 or A3. Let's do A3. We might get lucky and remove some stone skin. Okay, we did it from Marius. Oh, and we can actually inst... No, no, we can't block revive him. Not with the UDK, but we can kill him. Yeah, there there's no way he's gonna have reaction on Galleus that is already in stone skin. If he did that, then he wouldn't have lethal, so... I think we're good. I think that already seals the deal. Pretty sure. He doesn't have, like, Devas now, so Daras is not gonna one-shot us with the AoE. And we have Cleanse, we have Double Reviver, Polymorph. Surely we can survive yeah, long enough to Penis is. Okay. Damn, that, that that actually did kind of hard. Even when he had like barely any debuffs on the team. I mean the boss on the team. The Taras Ayo we nuke like totally scares scales more from the the actual buffs than the HP scaling, so it's a huge deal. I think it's 15% increased damage per buff, and that might not sound a lot, but when you think about it, if you have like every you have like four champions and everybody has four buffs, it's an insane damage increase. I still think that the Taras AoE nuke multiplier should should definitely be nerfed. If you disagree, then feel free to um, explain that in comments, but. I feel like both A2 and A A3 multipliers on Taras, both of them should be nerfed. They are the highest hitting skills in the game. I mean, Siegfried can hit harder with his nuke, but pretty much the hardest hitting skill in the game, let's say. And as far as HP scaling champions go, he is um, he hits many times more than any other HP scaling champions, and he's also by far the tankiest champion in the entire game and nobody else is like <laughs> even half as tanky as Taros so th that's where we're, we're at anyway by the way I haven't been ranting about Taras a lot I used to cry about Taras and Maritska on every video but I guess now that we see them less I cry about them less often but I will I will still do it when given the opportunity. Uh, 
Okay, we're, we're against a pseudo clan mate. Not not from my actual clan, but from my from my cluster. So good luck, Lord Bao. I don't know where that name comes from. I don't know if it's from some anime or something like that, but I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> it it kind of sounds like it's a name of some anime character or something like that, but maybe it's, it's a historical figure or something completely different. Are we just gonna do do the same thing? I feel like we probably should. Also, the Lazarus can weak it on Galleo, so there's that as well. Oh, he has nice, dude. I want to get nice so bad. I think I think I could make some nice things, <laughs> nice things happening with nice. I think people don't people are underestimating him a lot, and I think he's one of those champions that. If you have very good gear and you can make tanky pills, he can really like be, be super good. <laughs> he he would be my best reviver on my account as an ogre. I think it would be super interesting to have him. Now I like my Galileos at this point. I'm kind of already happy with him, but I wish I could switch my Aphidius to, to nice. That would be so dope. But maybe next time, maybe maybe Plarium. <laughs> Larry will see my video and me crying and maybe they'll maybe they'll feel bad about it and finally you know uh do, do some shady shady background things and actually actually give me some some good RNG or just rig the shard balls in my favor. I think it's about time. Not even RNG, I just want them to rig rig the shard balls in my favor, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna get good RNG, just read it, give me like Galatir and Nice on my next two pulls. It, it will be good content, first of all. Okay, there, there goes Narsus. It will be good content for me personally, and you know, it will be. I would have content for like months and months if I. if that happened. But yeah, yeah, what? We could attempt to block revive, but it just. Um. Cancels our turn. That was kind of a weird thing. I mean, I knew that we were block revived, but it was giving me the option to do it, and I had to try it. But I wasn't expecting that to happen. Weird. Now he has the immunity buffs on everybody, so I think we have to open with the A3, sadly. With the A2, if he didn't have the immunity, we probably could have killed his entire team. But now it's going to be a tricky thing that can we ever get another turn on Galleos. I like my Galleos, but obviously Nice is like infinitely better, so I really wish to have him. When he was announced, I was instantly, you know, foaming in my mouth about Galleos. That <laughs> uh, not about Galleos, I mean about Nice, that he's super strong and cool. And people were saying to me that he, he's not that good at all. And then we looked the next week's top 20. Like, I think Galleos was released maybe like on Friday or something like that. And he was in the game for like two days. Ah, oh, goddamn Shu Chen. He, he took like three turns before my Galleos. And now we're block revived. He, he was in the game for like two days. And then the rank 1 and rank 2 in pl Platinum Reset had nice in their defense. And you know... That's because other people didn't have him. I think people don't don't realize at all how OP that champion is. I know, I realize. I think he's he might people might change their mind. He might later be known as the best nuker in the game. He's like criminally underrated. We were super close there though. We we kind of almost had it. I mean, the nice could have weak it any time on my Gallows, but he didn't. And he did like four nukes total on my gallows, and not a single one of them wicked. So we actually got kind of unlucky. If any of those four hits would have wicked, then I think we would have won the battle. We're pretty sure. Anyway, it's not a big deal, but we totally had that battle.
Now we're kind of running out of time. There's like 20 minutes. I want to get to 5.8k. That, that's the goal today. So we need to get two more wins. We're kind of um, freezing, freezing just below the finishing line. And we need to close the deal. I'm, I'm writing notes for myself. I think I'm, I'm going to put uh, nice in the thumbnail. And I wrote, wrote to Discord on my memory channel or my like memo channel that may make a thumbnail with nice for, for the video. I'm not, you know, like, I'm not that organized or, you know, super, you know, I'm just, you know, going with the flow and kind of... Um, doing what comes to my mind, so. Video thumbnails and titles are not planned ahead. Usually, usually they happen during or after the video and never before. Maybe that's normal, I, I don't know. Maybe that's normal. Maybe, maybe, maybe nobody plans their, their video thumbnails ahead. Maybe, I, maybe I'm thinking in a weird way. Okay, <laughs> this feels kind of cool. We're abusing both Wukong and Armans, and both of his nukers get polymorphed before he gets a turn. Dude, I wish this was a battle with Drog, and this happened to Drog. I would want to see the Drog reaction when this happens. <laughs> he, 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 he would be, he would make like a scene about this. <laughs> he, he would not not be having fun if this happened. He hates polymorph so much, and. Imagine if this happened to him. I need to make another video with him soon. I'm gonna be away for weekend for the Crawfish party that I, I was talking about before, which is like a Nordic tradition. Maybe I should hit him up tomorrow and see if we can do like some video before it. Maybe not, he, he's kind of busy and if I try to make it done like in a very short um, time, he's probably not able to do it, but I'll ask him. I don't even have <laughs> have any specific video in my mind right now, but there's like so many different videos that we can do with Drog, that we, we can just, we can do anything. We could talk about the new champions or updates or anything PvP related, it, it's super easy to make videos with him, so. Okay, this is the final battle. If we get a win, we're finally gonna break the 5.8k benchmark. Not that that signifies anything, but we are setting ourselves an arbitrary goal to try to improve, I guess. It's something that I've been doing a little bit in real life as well, because, you know, I have never been like super fat, but I used to be super fit back in the day. And I did gain a lot of weight, I mean, not like, you know, not fat, fat, but, you know, not overweight, but I wasn't in, like, fit condition. And in the past year, you know, you might not believe it, you might not even know this is from the pictures, but I have lost, like, 10 kilos, and it's quite a large amount, actually. Especially on a on kind of small frame like mine. Do I want to pick the Angora or not? Let's go with Kaleos and Angora. I'm like 73 kilos right now. And I was like 84 kilos on last summer. So I did, I did lose a pretty significant amount of weight actually. You literally can't tell it from the videos because my face is as skinny or fat as it used to be. And everywhere else, but you know, like my arms, arms are a little bit thinner and my belly fat has gone down a little bit and so on. I, I still want, want to lose like maybe like five more kilos and be in like actual like um, 
actual fit condition. Uh, uh, I think I have to pick the UDK. I, I don't think I can go without picking it. Or alternatively, maybe I'll go with Wukong and Rotos. Maybe I'll do do that. May, may, yeah, that, that can work. Mm. If he picks UDK now, I can just ban the Crixia and hopefully polymorph it. <clears throat> yeah, my voice is <laughs> voice is dying like I said before. Let me look it up in uh <laughs> not in American but in your um your numbers. I'm like 177 centimeters and 73 kilos. So <laughs> Let, let's look, but that's in American. Okay, looks like I'm like 5.97 inches, <laughs> whatever that means. L let's call it the 510 to be <laughs> to be uh, generous. And what's my weight? Okay, so I'm 5'10 and 160 pounds. Very, very irrelevant random factoids that I don't know <laughs> if anybody cares about it, but now you know. Uh, I think we polymorph the Marius and not the Narsus. Oh, of, oh, of course. I forgot about the UDK. Th that's why we picked him in the first place, but looks like we didn't have enough accuracy. Well, we picked him for two reasons. The other reason is that he can also... Um, should I do the revive on death? Let's do that. He can also proc the polymorph potentially against the Marius. We're kind of stalling a little bit here, but Ankara is going to take less damage now from the Narsus Nuke. And we're kind of buying time for the Wukong to annoy him and him to lose his cooldowns and so on. Okay, he didn't want to use his nuke, he was saving it for later. Interesting. Damn. I feel like his Marius is gonna go before my Galleos, but if my Galleos goes first and I remove the boss now, Kalleos is gonna tear him up, so I have to risk it. Oh, well, we went before. Well, oh, we can still get enfeebled though. Should I just do this skill? <laughs> let's do this. I, I don't usually use this one, but let's go with it. I think we can kill them. Yeah, we can kill them. Marius without, um, without getting enfeebled if we switch the form. And now he also has the unkillable. Yeah, I, I don't think I really ever use that skill. Pretty much I instantly switch the form, that's what usually happens. Damn, if if I go for revive, I'm inviting the uh, end people. Let, let's do the A2. We did polymorph, I really wish we can... Ah. Uh, and we got the enfeeble. Now, now we're... Wait, wait, it's one turn and we can switch form and he's frostbitten. No, no, this is actually great. And see if he do doesn't have immunity. If we just don't get polymorphed, we can win. It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. Come on. Ah, I had it. That was winnable. I uh, Dude, I had already won. 
why you do this to me, Parium? I had won that battle. Just let, let me win. We would have hit the 5.8k and it would have been a beautiful win against kind of impossible team. But we had to lose it. Now, now, now it's over. Now I'm gonna cry. And he still has the UDK with defense buff, so not like Rotos can go to town yet. Okay, we will lost it. There's no way I can win this battle at, at this point. There's no way. Dude, we totally had it at that one moment. It was totally... <sighs> a winning position. Well, you, you play with Debus and you get polymorphed. It is what it is. Now I'm writing down in my notes that I need to put some sad music or memes or something like that on the Polymorph uh, event. This is the level of YouTube we're at. I'm just ran typing random notes during the video to make some crappy edits later. I think it's a lot better better with with my crappy edits than without them so i'm kind of glad that i started doing something about it i don't think most people in raid really do anything like that i think it's only um ash that does it and he has like i guess full-time editor worst job is to add effects and memes on his videos but i was talking with like you know somebody from his team and he was suggesting that I could do something like that and obviously I don't know anything about anything or video production or anything like that but I was like sure I guess I can look into it and try it and it it's really not that hard so if you don't like go overboard with it so I totally should keep doing it and maybe try do some new stuff new stuff every now and then I actually was kind of luck lucky because um, my brother's girlfriend is this, you know, very artsy type of person. She actually did, did the, the avatar I have on YouTube, the Rotos picture. But she also has used, like, he, she has done some video editing before. And she was giving me some small pointers how, how to do it. Which I totally could have googled myself too. Eventually I, I would have figured it out. But it... It saved me a lot of time and helped me out a lot, so... I, I don't think I want to say her name. <laughs> name on the video, but thanks for her, I guess. <laughs> not, not I guess, but that, thanks, thanks for her. I've been trying to tell my brother to make YouTube videos since I started doing them. He's actually pretty good in... League of Legends, not like he's Grandmaster, so he's not quite Challenger, but he's Grandmaster, he has played it for years and he's very active in it, so I feel like he he, he, he totally could, could start making content as well and probably, you know, could do a lot better than me. And, you know, like he has a, like a good friend that is actually like a um like a big content creator in League of Legends, so I'm sure if, if he started making videos, his friend would help him out as well, so... By big content creator, I mean like... Um, 
around 10 times bigger than me, so he's like an actual full-time content creator. I mean, I'm I'm kind of am at this point. Too. I'm kind of like half-assed full-time content creator, but not really. You know, I'm also studying, so. I I have this big plan that <laughs> once I'm done with my studies, I don't know if I keep making content or if I'm gonna do some other stuff. But what I'm studying, I can. Um, do it anywhere, like I don't have to live in any specific place. I kind of would want to um, travel around a little bit and maybe move to like uh, some Asian country for a couple years, like where where you have warm weather and like you know ocean and nice um, environment, and you have like good cheap food and <laughs> everything is low price, so you can have like. A field day there. I don't know if that sounds like you know super cringe, but I'm not really tied uh, down to like mort kits or anything like that. So and especially if I like keep making videos and so on, I could totally you know live in Thailand, let's say for like a year or two or basically anywhere. I have thought about what countries would be like good good ones to do it, but I don't think I'm brave enough to you know go to Latin America or Africa or anything like that and I would want to live in a warm country for a couple of years so I think that only leaves like Asian countries and I think it would be most fun to live not not like in you know Japan or Korea or something like that which is super expensive but if I'm like you know working for myself and so on and I were to live in let's say Thailand that would be you know Easiest, um, easiest days of my life. Or that's what I'm thinking in my head. But maybe it's maybe it's not gonna be like that. But I think I'm probably gonna do something like that. I think there's um, isn't one of the. I don't wanna say it wrongly, but I think. Um, let me think about it. I think Grim Reaper, uh, I think he, I don't know if he moved, but I think he said that he's gonna move to Malaysia or something like that, but I could totally remember wrong, and maybe it was some other country, but I feel like he had some kind of plan like that as well, like another content creator from Raid. I think he said that he had like Malaysian wife or something like that, or girlfriend or something, anyway. That doesn't sound doesn't sound too bad. Living in some cheap Asian country and doing raid videos. I mean, life could be worse than that. And I really like the Asian food. It's way better than Finnish food. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Our food costs like I don't know twenty times more than it does in Thailand. And whatever you. Like, whatever food style you buy from, like, it's gonna be also 10 times better than what you would get on restaurant here, so. I don't really... I think I have spoken about this on videos before. I kind of like cooking, but... Um, I feel like there's no good food here. If I order a takeout or go eat somewhere, it's way more expensive than if I did it myself. And it also tastes like much worse than I did it if I did it myself. So I kind of I don't I don't wanna say enjoy cooking, but I guess that's the right term. Like I'm kind of into cooking. I I experiment with stuff and I cook everything by myself, like always. But I think if I lived somewhere like Thailand, I probably would never cook and I would just go go buy something super good every time and save save time not, not cooking myself. That, that, that might sound kind of funny, but I kind of like cooking, but if I had good options, like I think for instance in America, 
I think I know that you can. There's a lot of options for different types of food you can get, and it's relatively good and cheap compared to Finland. If I lived in a place like that, I definitely wouldn't cook as much. I also kind of, you know, I kind of like to do meal prepping as well that I make like maybe three days worth of food or maybe a little bit more, sometimes at time. And do I need to go with Mika again? No, let's go with you again. No. I'm kind of second guessing myself. We, we could go for different options. If we go with UDK and ban Galatir, that could be one option. Or we could go with more than maybe ban Krixia. Maybe we'll go with that. What was I saying? Forgot. So something about takeout and cooking. Oh yeah, about meal prepping. Yeah. I really, like if I make something like chicken curry or some kind of you know wok food. I often like to make you know a big. Um, What's the word? A big batch, a big batch of food, and if, even if I like microwave like meal prepped curry that I made myself and eat it in like two days, <laughs> it's still gonna be like ten times better than the curry that I could buy from a restaurant. That's how I feel, and I'm not saying that I'm some kind of you know genius cook or anything like that. I'm saying that the Finnish. <laughs> Finnish restaurant and cooking scene is crap and anybody can make 10 times better food 10 times cheaper so every time I order like takeout food I regret it and I swear never to do it again and then I do it maybe like in six months or something like that you, you Americans don't know how how good you have it in that sense Never, never order finished takeout food. They, they don't, they don't put passion into that. Maybe if you go to eat like super expensive restaurants, then you can get really good food. But even in like medium expensive restaurants, often the food is very like crappy, and you're like shocked that I paid this much for the food, and it's this bad. Like I could make way better food myself. Why am I paying for this crap? That, that's what I'm thinking every time. Okay, let's focus on the fight. I don't, I don't think we can make to the 5.8k anymore, but let's get one last win for the road. Uh, I think we can... I think this... If Taras and... Yeah, I think this will go well. I think the supports are gonna die, but I don't think... Taras is gonna die, and we're gonna proc the passive. Oh, God, they survived it. Okay. Damn. I, I, I shouldn't do the AoE nuke now. If I do that, then... <sighs> George is gonna... I mean, Seekrund is gonna revive everybody. I think I can do A1, though. I don't think it's gonna die to A1. Yeah. Taras is so tanky that even with defense buff and half health, he's still not gonna die to, like, nuke. And if, if it was, was like any other nuker, they would easily, easily die. Now the good thing that we have is that, you know, we have two buff strippers. Both, um, like, the chicken is a buff stripper and Maud is a buff stripper. But I think his buff strip is gonna happen afterwards, right? Okay, I think we have to do A1 here. Wait, what? Oh, fuck, I forgot. The A1 is also gonna hit everybody that has decreased defense on them. I totally forgot about that. But it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna remove the block damage with more than we're still good. Ah. Galatir resisted it. But we have we have like nukes on Um Galleos. So I, I think we're good. By the way. Was I was I right or was I super right about Mord? Everybody was telling me that I'm like overestimating Mord. He is she's an insane counter against Galatir. She's the only like you know actual counter that there is against Galatir. Totally 
like underrated champion that people people really should think about if it's time to skip couple bad fragment events and go for her. I should probably do another video about mod soon, but I just did one, so I don't think I I should do one yet. I, I was kind of saying that I'm gonna do like a mod guide, so I probably should do that though. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make mod guide and make it beforehand and maybe I'll post it during during weekend when I'm in the graphics party and not at my home. Anyway, we kind of had rough time at the start or the middle and we were kind of going back and forth in the end but we're definitely doing better than i was like a week ago so god was actually pretty good yeah that's it any questions or comments put them down below have a nice day and see ya